Hi guys, so welcome to my project. Um, I'm going to be talking about the ozonolysis mechanism. Um, so here we go. Um, so a little bit of history about ozonolysis and its modern uses. Um, it was invented by Christian Frederick Schoben uh, in 1840. Uh, he was mostly known for the invention of the fuel cell. Uh, and for, you know, back then they kind of used it. Uh, it was mostly used for determining structure of organic molecules. Um, but in modern times, since the creation of spectrometers, um, it's not necessarily used in that uh, way anymore, but it still can be. Uh, and in terms for current applications, we see that organic um, chemistry research is one of its main um, applications. And also the synthesis of pharmaceutical drugs is another. Uh, those are just kind of, uh, kind of the big two that it's used for, but there are also other uses. Um, so in terms of the overall reaction, on the left, we have our generic alkene. Um, then we'll react to that alkene with um, first ozone, which is O3, and then DMS, which is dimethyl sulfide. Uh, and on the right, we have our two products. We have ke a ketone and an aldehyde, depending on the substituents that are connected to it. Um, as you can see here, ozone has two resonance structures. Uh, we see that both resonance structures have a positive, have a positive charge on the oxygen um, the middle oxygen, um, but the other two oxygens have alternating um, negative and positive charge depending on movement of the electrons. We see that here left um, on the left oxygen that there are more electrons than the oxygen can also gives it a negative charge. And as we move uh, a pair of those ox uh, electrons into the bond, we create a double bond here. And on the right, where these pi, bond are, pi bonds are, these electrons will move onto the oxygen, creating this negative charge we have on the right. Um, so the first step, we see that this negative oxygen that has, uh, this oxygen that has a negative charge will attack the one, one side of the alkene, specifically this carbon. Then the pi bonds from the alkene will move and attack the left oxygen, as we can see here, and these pi bonds that connect these two oxygens will move onto the positively charged oxygen. And we can see here on the right-hand structure, we have um, two pairs of electrons per oxygen. Um, all charges are neutral and um, all their electron orbitals are filled. Moving to step two, we see that these um, oxygen oxygen bombs are kind of weak. So they'll break easily. So we see that a pair of electrons move to form uh, for first this right oxygen. This pair of electrons will move into uh, make a double bond with the carbon. The carbon carbon bond electrons will move onto the carbon carbon or carbon oxygen bonds on the left to form a double bond there. And these finally, these two top, uh, these electrons in this oxygen oxygen bond will move onto the central oxygen. And as we can see here on the right, we have a carbonyl and a carbonyl oxide. Yet these are only intermediates, as we will see in the next step. So we see that the carbonyl group flips and aligns with the charges of the carbonyl oxide, positive to negative and negative to positive. So this negative oxygen will perform a nuclear nucleophilic attack on the carbon of the carbonyl. And the oxygen, which is partially negative of the carbonyl, will perform a nucleophilic attack on the oxygen, I mean on the carbon of the carbonyl oxide. And in turns, we get this product on the right. We see again that all oxygens have two pairs of electrons and that all atoms have their ele electron orbitals filled. So again, as I stated in step number three, these oxygen bonds, oxygen oxygen bonds, and um, aren't that strong, and they kind of are, are will break easily. So again, we see the movement of electrons. We see that um, the single bond of electrons in these carbon oxygens will move over to make double bond electrons, and we see that twice, once at the bottom and once at the top. Here on this third oxygen, we see that dimethyl sulfide come in and perform its attack on that oxygen to bond with it and form a double bond. Again, with these movement of electrons, we have a double bond. And in terms, our final products, we get a mixture of ketones, aldehydes, and also this oxygen bonded to this 
so disulfide. Um, again, these two uh, ketones and aldehydes will have a mixture of them depending on the substituents that are connected to the carbon. Um, so that's it, guys. Um, thank you for watching, and hope you hopefully you like the video.